All right, thanks everyone for coming today to the second annual Ex-Muslim Speak Out Conference hosted by the Secular Party of Australia. Uh, just firstly, if anyone doesn't want their photo taken, uh, if you could please make yourself known to Andrew Bott. Just pop your hand up, Andrew. So he'll pop a yellow sticker on, uh, sticker on you and your image will not be used today. All right, so just firstly, toilets are located down the hall and off to the left. And if you can please put your phones on silent. Uh, refreshments will be served approximately 3 p.m. And if we can keep questions to the Q&A uh, section after tea time. All right, so we have a great lineup today of credible, knowledgeable and informative speakers, which I'm sure you are going to find very interesting. Our first speaker, Armin Navabi, has flown all the way from Canada. Armin is an ex-Muslim atheist activist founder of the world's largest community of atheists called Atheist Republic with over 2 million uh, followers on Facebook and an author of the excellent book, Why There Is No God. You are welcome to buy a signed copy of this book for only $25. Uh, all the proceeds will go to supporting Spartacus, an ex-Muslim who fled Pakistan and is now waiting in Nepal for his fate to be decided. We welcome Armin. So I have a very limited time, so I just want to ask you guys, would you be more comfortable if I go through this really fast and have more Q&A? Would you have enough questions to fill the Q&A if I finish, try to finish this very fast? I'd rather have an engagement with the audience instead of just speaking for myself. Is that, does that sound good? All right. I'm, I'm seeing some people nodding their heads. Okay. I'll try to finish this as fast as I can. All right. Uh, I don't know if I can. There's too, many, too much stuff here. Um, okay. So... We have been, and by we I mean me, myself and some of the rest of the speakers here, um, and also a lot of people that are not here from the ex-Muslim community, have been doing a lot in the past five years to get a lot of discussions that were not really tolerated by anybody from any side to normalize it. and. <clears throat> To, to have discussions that nobody wanted to have. And we have made a lot of progress, but we not enough. And I think one thing I'm trying to do is to point to the things, to, to some hurdles that stand in our way, and to identify them, and to point them out, and call them out uh, for, as the reasons why we are not growing as fast as we need to. Because the... Ex-Muslims, and again, this is not, I don't want to participate in oppression Olympics, trying to say like this is the most victimized group minority in the world. And, and I know that happens way too much. But it is one of the worst. If not, I'm not saying it's the worst. Obviously, there's so many different groups of people that we need to protect and all of them deserve protecting. But the, the amount of support that this community gets compared to the amount of shit that they have to deal with is completely off balance um, and it's this is one of the this should be the human rights movement of our time uh, there is not that many other groups of people that you could name 13 countries that their the punishment for their existence is death um, and it, it's, it's amazing to me that it hasn't this hasn't become mainstream yet and it's starting to thanks to people like Rahaf uh, but not fast enough. So, so what are what is holding us back? One main reason is the atheist community itself, because many people within the atheist and there's a, there's a lot. I don't even know if I could get go through all of them, but a lot of people within and this is a problem not just for the ex-Muslim movement is for all things atheism related when it comes to do, getting together and doing any work done. A lot of atheists have this. Uh, are very sensitive about building any current community because they think like, oh, it's, you're building another church. This looks like another community. Like as, as soon as four people get together and try to do something like, oh, it's a church. We're like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, what if we get together and start cooking and sharing recipes? Is that a church? Like when, since when did religion have a monopoly over a community? 
this is actually the con that religion tries to sell that without religion you're not going to have community you're not going to have people support some people need it and atheists buy into that we need to reclaim that from them i mean gay rights activism for example they got together and at least in western countries they have made a lot of progress not enough yet but a lot of progress by getting together and other people are like oh you're changing the definition of atheism if you get together like the gay rights activists change the definition of what it means to be gay just because they got together and got, fight for their rights no and you don't have to be just like you don't have to be gay to fight for gay rights and many gay many people that are homosexual do not are not involved in gay rights movements same thing with the atheist movement we you don't have to be an atheist to fight for atheists but many atheists are not part of the atheist rights movement. It's complete. Being an atheist is separate from being involved, being an atheist rights activist. They're separate things. We're not changing anything about what it means to be an atheist. One, there are a lot of examples for why we need we need to build a community. There's not that much support for out there for us. There, when 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 Christians are discriminated against, when Jews are discriminated against, when Muslims are discriminated against, there's some very powerful organizations and groups taking care of them and not that they shouldn't like that's great they need that but there's not that much for atheists like to, to be fair though there are some there's the international humanist and ethical union they have done they they helped the atheist republic uh the malaysian uh, what happened to the atheist republic malaysian and consulate in kuala lumpur when the government tried to uh, hunt them down simply because they got together and had a drink and apparently that was not acceptable. So a, minute, uh, a deputy minister said, said that it's against their constitution, and they need to be hunted down. And the International Humanist Ethical Union was one of the only human rights groups out there that was that, that actually brought this all the way to the UN, which is amazing. But it, if it was any other group, this would be headline news. If any other government, any other government in the world said something similar, we need to hunt down the Christians. Like even Trump does, doesn't go as far as saying we need to hunt down the Muslims. Hunt down the Muslims. Imagine if somebody said that. Or say, somebody said we need to hunt down the Jews. This would be international news everywhere. Even, even in Saudi Arabia and Iran, which do discriminate against Muslims and, uh, sorry, against Christians and Jews, they, nobody will go, no government official will go on record and say, we need to hunt down the Jews, or we need to hunt down the Christians. But a country as modern and as advanced Malaysia, is supposed to be a tolerant and Islamic country, they, they, the deputy minister gets to go there and say, we need to hunt down the atheists, and he still keeps his job. There's not that much controversy. Only among atheists, there's some like, oh, wow, he said that. But there's nothing else. Why, why there's not much else? So, I mean, if that doesn't show you that we need community, I don't, I don't know what else will. Um, some other groups that do deserve some credit like i don't want to say that nobody's talking about it like secular rescue um the iheu that i mentioned uh, atheist refugees in germany they are some very but they're very small compared to what other groups have as support and again i'm not saying they don't deserve support obviously i just say why don't we have something similar um another thing from the atheist community when it comes to ex-muslim specifically and i was mostly just general with atheists but when it comes to ex-muslims um they, especially atheists in free countries, right? They shy away from, you know, attacking Islam or saying bad things about Islam. And one, like, one thing this Rahaf story made it clear was how sensitive people still are about this. Like, a lot of media coverage did mention that Rahaf was an atheist and apostate. She abandoned Islam. But you can see how a lot of them wouldn't go mention that. Like, they mentioned that she, they mentioned that she has. Um, you know, there's discrimination against women in Saudi Arabia, the guardianship issues, uh, political prisoners, um, you know, even it's even becoming, which, and these are all great, and it's even becoming more acceptable to fight against a forced hijab. That was not something that was okay to say. But is they were still sensitive about saying that, yeah, she said she left Islam. She didn't like Islam. She was an atheist, open atheist. And that was the main reason why she was being targeted more than anyone else. I mean, all those other issues are important, but you are really get put on the spot if you openly announce yourself as an atheist in, a, in an Islamic country like Iran or Saudi Arabia. But even though that was the main reason why she was, she was a target, 
when they were covering her story, they wouldn't they wouldn't mention that part. There was even an example, and I credit to um, a YouTube channel, Nightmare Field, that pointed it out, pointed this out to us, that she was they were interviewing her, and you, she was saying Islam in in her interview, but the subtitles didn't include that part. She was talking about her atheism and the fact that she left Islam, but the translation, no, that's too sensitive. I think that was in Sweden, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and like another example, why the, the shit that we have to deal with. Um, I don't know if you guys know about like another YouTuber called um, Apostate Prophet. He just recently uh, had Twitter got completely uh, ba uh, banned, and he appealed it, and he, the the uh, ban was still confirmed. Like they didn't give his Twitter account back. And the only thing he did was mention that uh, some of the uh, some of the violence that Islam endorses. There was nothing else. And we, we were sure that, okay, this was a mistake. Once he appeals, it's going to get a Twitter, his account back. But no. they. I mean, the, the fact that this is still the norm, like the ex-Muslims, how many Facebook accounts have you lost? I don't know about him right now in the last 12 months. Yeah, tw like, he constantly lo loses his Facebook accounts for saying facts. Facts about facts that are undeniable. Like anybody goes, like, "Hey, Islam says this," you get your account removed. Like, but but it does. <laughs> like, what what is it? What is it? What are you? What are you guys doing? But it's it's just so uh, it's just so hard, and that and people just sometimes like, "Oh yeah, that's that's horrible," but um, so sad. That, but if if Christians, if they put like a. Uh, Bible verse out there, or if Muslims put the Quranic verse out there, and if they get accounts get removed, they 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 will start a shitstorm around the, what discrimination and all, not tolerating their views. Like we are, we are not very organized. We're not. We're getting better though, right? But we're not very supportive. We're not yet as supportive as of each other as we need to be. As and and I get, what I think is that it can't be just the ex-Muslim community because there's not that many of us compared to the entire atheist community. I really think that the entire atheist community has to be more supportive of ex-Muslim. This is the civil rights movement of our time and we need the rest of the atheist community to back us up here. Um, <clears throat> one reason why I think that a lot of even, even atheists are a little bit sensitive about supporting ex-Muslims. You hear it a lot, like, hey, I like what you're doing, but I get, I'm not going to say it publicly. And say, well, you, you do you, good job. Like, I'm going to support you uh, with that. Uh, but the, the reason is that a lot of ex-Muslims don't just come and say that, yeah, we, we left Islam, and that should be normalized. Most ex-Muslims that I work with, they, are, they want to say, yeah, we left Islam, and that should be OK. But we also want to shit on Islam, and that should also be okay. And a lot of atheists are like, eh, I don't know. Uh, you, so they say some atheists are going too far. It's just such a stupid thing to say. Yeah, we're, we're pointing out to a book that says beating your wife is not just okay, it's mandatory. And it's not mandatory when she's disobedient. It's mandatory when you just fear that she might be disobedient. And again, just to be fair, there's two other steps that you have to accomplish before you start beating her. But once once those two steps are not successful, then you start beating her. Um, then we're talking about a book that endorses taking women as sex slaves in war. You could it says that married women are haram to you unless you capture them in war. And they're yours. This we're talking about a book that is endorsing slavery. We're talking about a book that says that all of us here, I think, unless there's Muslims here. No, no. <laughs> all of us here deserve to be tortured for eternity. If any of these ideas came under any other label on other than religion, nobody was shy away but calling it bullshit and calling it out as barbaric and hateful and disgusting and no excuses for it would be accepted. But when ex-Muslims come out like, hey, this is bullshit, like, yeah, you guys are too right-wing, you guys are taking it too far. I support ex-Muslims, but not those ones that are 
so outspoken about it. Oh, fucking bullshit. Get out of our way. Like, you, if you're not going to help, just, you know, just don't stand in our way. We don't need you. You're not being an ally. We're like, oh, we think everybody has a right to say what they want. Yeah, of, are you, of course. Like, congratulations. But when it comes to supporting people that are saying the most unacceptable things to say, you're shy away. You're like, oh, I'm not, I'm... I'm too white to say shit on Islam. <laughs> what the hell? Like, when did when was the last time I, you had to check your skin color to be able to call that bullshit? Like, like you you are from there. You 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 know Islam better. Um, so you talk about that. Like, wait, you need to, you really think I, you need to be a Muslim? You need to live in Iran for twenty years to know that the prophet can't get on a horse and go to to heaven and meet other prophets? You really need twenty experience. How much Islamic studies do you need to understand that that's bullshit? <laughs> Another thing that, and I know a lot of some other panelists here disagree with me, which is fine, but I think a lot of one major hurdle in our way is also this idea of Islamic reform, which is the suggestion that, you know, I think it's also another way of being, you know, thinking people are too sensitive, maybe don't, shouldn't be outright against Islam, you know, maybe there's another way we can make it a little bit better. It's just excuses to not call that something so obviously bullshit. You know, what the hell are you talking about? When where are the people that say like maybe we shouldn't completely get rid of Nazism? Like don't throw out the baby out with the bathwater. Maybe just like keep the good messages. Maybe if we could say he didn't mean the Aryan, maybe we are all Aryan, and, and you know, maybe he's talking about the whole human race. Let's just look at it differently instead of abandoning your whole thing completely. Never mind, I don't need that. But and even again, I saw with this whole what I have story coming up. Some people instead of calling her an atheist apostate or and somebody has that has left Islam, some people are referring to her as like reformist with Muslim origin. No, no, she's an atheist. What the hell are you talking about? She's not, she completely, and I think, I, I wouldn't be surprised if some people that are close to her now are trying to be like, maybe you should tone it down a little bit. Like, shame on anybody that's telling her that right now, if, if they are saying, and I'm glad that she wasn't, at least for some time, I don't know. But these stories, and the more people come out as atheists, they are helping us. They are helping us. They are normalizing being atheists. They're normalizing saying no to an ideology that everybody should say no to. And don't, you know, don't misdirect the conversation to something else. We are, if, if they're helping more of us be accepted and more of us, even by Muslims, um, you know, that's the thing that we need to, we need to focus on the, on the, on the aspect of this that is the most demonized, not on the stuff that is already has made a lot of progress. I mean, Focus on that as well. I don't know, but just like, don't ignore the part that needs the most attention. We, we, I mean, not we. At least I. I don't know. I'll talk to you guys later. We don't, I don't want Islamic reform, right? This is. I mean, people, people in Saudi, like ex-Muslims in Saudi Arabia, ex-Muslims in Iran, activists that do exactly what we're doing in Bangladesh, in Pakistan. In Malaysia, in Indonesia, in Egypt, they are they are risking almost everything to be able to say to a backward, barbaric, bullshit ideology that deserves no place in the modern world. And they are, so when they do all this stuff, we the rest of us have no excuses to do to demand anything other than the abandonment of this ideology. Anything else is just carrot being, you know, like you guys shouldn't be holding back. Oh, people need baby steps. If you need baby steps, what are you talking about? It's fucking, it's telling you to kill the rest of us. It's, it's in black and white there. It's, this is our series of book that is telling us to kill the rest of us who have abandoned this religion. This is not an ideology that deserves to be appreciated as a beautiful culture that maybe could, some people could see some good messages out of it. Fuck that. This is, we are living in the 21st century. We don't need ancient guys to, have, to live, even if the whole thing was, didn't have a single violent message in it. The fact, just promoting the idea 
that people that wrote books about societies or about the best way of living, about the universe, people that lived in a, in a time that had no idea about how any of this shit works, and just the promoting the idea that do, those books can be now used as a guide to life, life even if it doesn't have any violence or hate in it, that idea should just be thrown out. And, okay, so just to be clear, though, and this is something that I we had a conversation about, and I changed it a little bit based on our conversation. I, I am understanding of the intentions of some Muslims, that people that are Muslims and that want Islamic reform. They're just being ignorant. I understand that. That's fine. The, but the atheists who are supporting Islamic reform because they think that's, that maybe a chat, uh, to that's something that we could endorse more than the ex-Muslims because it's not as aggressive. You have to understand if you're an atheist that is endorsing that you are you are somebody that knows something is a lie, and you have decided to support knowingly support spreading a lie. There's no excuse for that. You think you are smart enough or intelligent enough to recognize bullshit, but maybe these backward barbarians that you know they're just stupid people. They just, let's, let's just give them some other version of the bullshit that as long as they don't blow us up, that's fine. Like let's just um, be ignorant as they want. Just just stay away from us. Yeah. So again. More people are risking their lives, risking everything to abandon Islam. So that leaves no excuses for us. We don't, we don't need Islam. We don't need Islamic reform. We don't need a new version of Islam. We can do better than Islam. We should do better than Islam. Anyway, let's do a Q&A now. <laughs> Alan Wadi do you think it's the case that the Bible's horrific verses, just as horrific as the Quran, no longer carry sway in how Christians and Jews act for the most part. Mm. But it's not the same with the Quran. Because of people like us that fought against religion, not the people that decided to come up with a ver new version of Christianity. A lot of people think that, uh, give credit to the Reformation for, for Christianity becoming more passive. That's, that's fucking bullshit. The Reformation they had, they had, had no influence. If you look at the Protestants, right? They were, they were very competitive with Catholics when it comes to brutality and and they were they were the ones that did the witch burnings they were more anti-woman they were more anti-jewish uh, they, they were as violent as bigoted as the Catholics so it just a different brand of bullshit does not help anybody right what uh, what what helped the Christ, the Christian world become less Christian was the Enlightenment movement, which was a movement against Christianity, against organized religion. And again, this is something I, I keep telling people, like, even when religions pretend to be more compatible with the modern world, it's a reaction to people that are fighting against religion. It wasn't from within the religion that decided to become better, right? And we sh the fact that it's a reaction to people that fight against nonsense means that that defense should never be accepted because we have already challenged those, those ideas and we have already made the progress of making the, making Muslims and Christians ignore Christianity and ignore Islam and get ideas from better sources, from you know, superior values, from other for people that are actually looking at things more logically. But So we don't need to re, you know, look at Christianity and Islam in a more modern way because when... Because that, when, Christ, when Christianity and Islam try to do that, that's a reaction to something that has already happened, which is the, which is the, you know, when, which better ideas winning. And the, the reaction, even with that reaction, that we are making that progress. What that reaction does is helps Islam and Christianity remain relevant. And we don't want them to remain relevant. We want Islam to die. We want Christianity to die. I mean, well, uh, people say, well, religion will then one day die anyways. You don't, we don't need to do anything. Oh, well, yeah, but we need to make it die faster. <laughs> and we think Islam is mostly harmful to Muslims, that Muslims are the number one victims of Islam. And the position that we have against Islam is because we care for people and we care for the harm. We, we want to stop the harm that Islam is causing. And even if you think we are completely, we are idiots, and that's not true, Islam is not harmful, and if you at least appreciate the intentions, maybe you could be friends with us 
even if you completely disagree with us. It's not a hate. It's not a hateful. To be against Islam is not a hateful position. It actually might be a, a very a position coming from sympathy and love. But can I get to the next question? Oh. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the normalization of atheism. My, my father attended the church because I'm happy that's what he does. And I'm wondering if you have any sort of sense of what percentage of, of people going to mosques are uh, atheists. There's no I don't I wouldn't know. There's I know we we run across a lot of people like when we went to the uh, to the Muslim Convention in Houston, so, uh, we wanted to interview Muslims to see what they think about ex-Muslims. Uh, sometimes we got answers for people like, I don't want to be on camera. And then when she started recording, they said like, we're actually ex-Muslims. We can't, we can't, like you were talking about Muslim people that are going to an Islamic convention following their parents, but they actually were ex-Muslims, right? So we know it's common, a lot of people that can be open about it, but there's no way to tell how much because there's no reliable data on it. Yeah. Uh, I have an observation. Um, if you look at the world map as far as the old world's concerned, so like not the Americas and Australia, I've noticed that from Morocco down east through to Indonesia, there's almost an unbroken chain of Muslim influence. And the story of, I think it's Muhammad split the moon in half. Mm -hmm. Would you consider that political line or Muslim line to be like splitting the old world in half, therefore being a metaphorical way of saying Islam is dominating the world? No, because the story came from before Islam was that big. No. I don't think. I don't so think. So the central idea being Islam is trying to spread like by cutting the world in half. I don't think so. I think Muslims, uh, when they had the first, the, when the Quran at first. I mean, the main miracle of the, in the Quran was supposed to be that the Quran is already a miracle above all miracles because it's beautiful. I don't, I don't know how that works, but uh, that I think they felt like, yeah, Moses has fire raining from sky. Jesus brought dead people back from, uh, brought them back to living. I guess the book is not enough. Okay, we split the moon, like splitting the sea. I think uh, splitting the sea, sea by Moses. I think it was just like a, some adding something to the story that makes it more miraculous more impressive than just a book as a miracle. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we're doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.